This thing, I got my, my new iPhone finally. Who's got an iPhone 11? I'm gonna give away some money. I haven't done a giveaway in a while on my live calls. Hello, I'm on my farm in Virginia. So I had to come in into the city to do a live call. I'm talking about my career group before I head to London tomorrow. I'm going on a world tour with Gary V, Grant Cardone, me. I started it already last month with me and Gary V, but now I'm going to London. Bye. If you're not in London, or if you are in London, or don't, did Twitter crash? Yeah. Yeah, Twitter's kind of retarded. Um, but I thought I would just go live because I haven't been live in like months. I got LASIK, by the way, so if I'm not wearing glasses, now you know why. But this is what I was going to talk about. You have approximately six weeks till it's a new decade. You see the movie 300? It takes about 300 people to change the world. So we've got a new decade coming in. First question for you is, how did you do in 2010 to 2020? Good year, bad, good decade, I mean, bad decade. Did you really do the core things you wanted to do? I want to do a little poll. Um, let me do a poll here. Maybe I'll do it on my Insta story. Who here, scale of one to 10, got stuff done this last decade that you wanted to? I wonder what the ratio is. What do you think, Adrian? Mm, 10%, 10%. I was gonna say 10%. 10%, Bo, did you? Uh, me? Everything? Oh, good? absolutely no. Not everything, but. The main wanna... things? What is this? Is this Insta? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I got Insta. Do I have Facebook too? Yeah. What's up, Facebook? Someone said this is Sparta. Twitter, forget Twitter, always crashes. Yeah, I guess I have the lucky finger. Where's YouTube? Oh, there we go. Can I get a loan, someone said. Turn mic up. Can you guys hear? Can you hear? Ty, you're the man, what's up? John Hochi did 90% of what he wanted to in the last decade. That's pretty good. Instagram has no comment showing. Huh. Yeah, they're all they're showing up over here. Maybe it's that app. It. Yeah. What what are you showing them on? I'm just, just like look at myself. Instagram saying Mr. Lopez got swole. Yeah. <laughs> Invest in my racing career. Invest in your racing career? Yeah, that's what uh Okay. Someone said seven percent. Still got my 67 steps, best advice. Okay, so a couple things, if you don't know, I wanted to announce this world tour I'm going on. That's number one. Be in one I'll be in Birmingham, England, 5,000 people. Me, Gary, V, Grant Cardone, and, and some other people on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. Then Friday, I'll be in Dubai. So if you happen to live in Dubai, Things a couple thousand people already booked to be there. And then, what's the other thing? Um, what's that? The, oh. oh, yeah, I'm gonna put one on here too. Is that your Insta? Mm -hmm. Okay. Second thing, I bought a big company. Some of you have seen all over the news. If I bought a company doing 740 million in revenue. I bought it two weeks ago. It's called Dress Barn. It's a 57-year-old brand clothing line. It has 650 stores. I'm shutting down the stores and I'm moving it all to e-commerce. So that's kind of cool. If you want, to, any of you want to learn about closing big deals, this was a big, complicated deal. It took me three months to do it, negotiating with all kinds of people, lawyers, bankers, annoying people, good people, everything in between. There you go. Um, so yeah, it was all over. It was in USA Today. It was in, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, so it's a massive e-com play. This company makes crazy money. Like $69 million last month. So now I own it and, um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Sometimes people ask me, 
You know, Ty, do you know anything about business? I'm like, well, maybe I do, maybe I don't. But one good thing, always uh, surprise people. It's the key. You, you surprise people a little bit because people go, oh, you know, this, that, and that, and then you pull off something that they didn't think you could pull off. It's one of the biggest business deals of the year in the U.S. So me and Alex bought it. Um, we closed October 30th. From We bought it from a publicly traded company. So, Ty, can we buy shares in Dress Barn? Nope, not right now. It's not public. We own it. I own it privately now. Spooky Barbie says, man, I look up to you. I'm trying to make millions. Spooky Barbies. Okay. You may want to change your username. People take you more serious if you want to make money. What's America's, what America's top business followers question? Don't know what that means. That was a very interesting. I haven't looked at comments in a while. So I've been trying to win a thousand bucks with no luck. Hello from El Paso. So a couple things I was going to say. So the first thing, I'm going on this world tour. Gary V, me, Grant Cardone. Number two, and I'm going to, I'm probably going to be on a world tour too next year. I'm trying to book out the dates, but Australia, Asia, uh, South America. I was supposed to be in Brazil, but I can't make the Brazil one. It's too many things, too short of time. So, um, somebody needs a hundred grand. Ty, what's your hottest program to buy right now, J Sue? So you just, I just closed um, one of my programs. Albert Preciado, what's up, man? How you been? Somebody said it's weird to see you without glasses. Yeah. So, three hundred. Last year I did this. Black Friday thing. I'm gonna launch this Black Friday thing again. It's a new year. And I'm gonna give you my top four programs plus some special stuff. And um, yeah, you're gonna save basically two grand. Here's what I was gonna say. Most people's, the last five years, the last 10 years was a waste when people, if you ask people, do they like their life, most people's last two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, they've been underperforming. So here's the thing, you gotta have mindset, but I was just talking to, I have a 300 group that I do live training with, just, it's a group of people who pay, it's like private training, and I was going, mindset's good, it's like if you wanna build a house, and you never build a house, you do need the mindset, the positivity to actually give you the optimism, the confidence to start, but at the end of the day, that alone will not sustain you. You actually have to know how to build a house. You actually have to know how to build a house. I know that's profound, um, and people will argue with me. They're like, no, you just need a mindset. You just manifest everything into your life that you want to have in your life. Well, I haven't found that to be true. Um, but I have found to be that you can manifest in your life things that you not only have the right mindset, but you also have actual skill in. You have to know how to build a house. You want to build a house? You have to know how to lay a foundation. You have to know how to put, you have to understand how to frame a house. You have to understand how to finish a house. You have to understand a roof. You have to understand how to finish the interior, drywall and electric and plumbing. It's all that stuff. Well, it's the same way to perfecting your life when it comes to the four pillars of the good life, health, wealth, love, happiness. It's like, it's almost like a game. You have to figure out life's a puzzle and you have to put it together. And most people, um, their life sucks because nobody ever showed how it, showed them how to put it together. And simultaneously, they're just thinking that they can hope and pray and that their life will be put together. It never will. And I, if you can learn one thing from this live call, it's very easy to waste a decade of your life. Just understand that. It's not, it, it goes even a, five years, it's been easier. It just flies by the next thing you know, and somebody said, Ty, you have to still execute. It's not just execute. You have to know what you're doing. I mean, if I give somebody a hammer and some nails and some wood and I say build a house, they can execute. Like, they can go nail boards together, but it won't be right. They'll build it in incorrect order. So I guess what I'm saying is you, you should take, and for some of you, you're willing to do it slow. Some of you want to accelerate. You really have to just start studying life at the core basis, every part of life. You have to study, like I spend a couple hours a day studying life. And you do also need to enjoy life too. 
but so you don't want to spend all your time studying, but you also don't want to spend all your time. Um, uh, you don't want to spend all your time executing, because then you just like run around like a chicken with your head cut off. You don't want to spend all your time studying, because then you're just in a room and you're never putting it in practice. So, but you also don't want to spend all your time enjoying life, because eventually it will create its opposite. People who party all the time, you'll eventually be broke. So I hope, that, I guess what I was going to draw out here is like 300 people can make a big impact on the world. 300 properly trained people. It's like in the, you know, the movie 300 and talking about the Spartans. They not only were 300 people with the right mindset, warrior mindset in that case. Secondly, they had skills that spent their whole life training as Spartan warriors. So they were very good and they held off a whole Persian empire or a whole Persian army. Um, and so in your life, you're going to have to piece together, you know, health at some level, wealth, love, happiness, and you're going to have to juggle those four. And some of them work against each other. Like, for example, building wealth often goes against, happy, against happiness because building wealth is stressful. Now, if you don't want to build a ton of wealth, it's not stressful. But if you want to build every single person, you name somebody who's made a lot of money, they've gone through warfare. They've gone through tremendous stress. Their happiness has gone down in the short run and then come back up in the long run, you know? So, um, and some of you don't care about some of these. You only care about others. That's fine. But you really got to pull off all four because I was just saying, it's like when you're sick, you don't even care how much money you have. If you have cancer, you like the thought of money, the utility of money goes away very quickly. So same with wealth. If you have wealth and health, but you're like lonely and unhappy, some people are prone to depression. If you're prone to depression and you don't tackle that, then you not you can pull off even all three of these, you end up killing yourself. That happens all the time. I was talking to my mom, I'm half German. She just came back from Germany and one of our relatives um, her husband killed herself, you know, he, he never, and he was pretty successful. He was a psychologist, I think. And he had a family and he had love and he had money and all that stuff, but he could never master happiness. You just end up, a lot of people think about suicide every day. And a lot of people, not everyone's serious about suicide, but a lot of people are in that mindset. They might not actually pull it off, but they're thinking, man, like, yo, like, if I wasn't here, I wouldn't even be sad about that. You know what I mean? So you have to train on each of these things. And really, you know, and there's like for this one here, I use this app called Headspace. And it really like that's an amazing one, especially if you have sleeping problems. Best thing you could do, put on that Headspace app. You're supposed to be meditating. You're not supposed to be sleeping, but I'm telling you a hack. The process of that relaxes the mind, allows you to take a nap. But which so that basically you know simple things like that you train day by day and now in the modern world it's easy like i said headspace it's not a company i own i don't make any money but you download an app like that i forget what it costs a couple bucks a month well guess what like all of a sudden you're happier so i think that that's a simple example of training like wealth is the same thing college used to be the training or wealth. It was like your career training. Unfortunately, it's outdated for the most part. Colleges are slowly going to go broke, I guarantee you. Um, or they're going to lose, they're already losing student base. There's a fierce competition because people can learn in other ways now. But, I mean, college is better than nothing, but for me, there was things that were better than that. So, at the end of the day, you know, how are you training each of these four kind of columns? That will determine the next decade of this life, of your life, 2020 coming up. You know, somebody said you need a degree. It depends what you want to be. If you want to be an accountant, you need a degree or a lawyer. But if you want to be a business person, you don't. In fact, if you look at the top business people, half of them have degrees and half of them don't. So, 
Uh, <laughs> Somebody said Gary B is greater than Ty. <laughs> possible. It's possible. A lot of people are greater than me. A lot of people are greater than me. Fortunately for me, I put my head in the sand. Want to see? You want a secret to be happy? Put your head in the sand. People always ask me all kinds. I was talking about this internet drama. People try to compare me to other influencers or this. Um, and I'm going, do it as long as I'm happy. And let everybody else get the glory. As long as these four things are in my life, I'm like, other people can make more money. Other people can do, I mean, I just did, I'm working on another deal. If I pull off these two deals, it'd be a billion dollars. A billion, two, two companies doing a billion dollars of revenue that I'm, one I've already purchased, 740 million in revenue. You know, there are a lot of people that don't know how to do that. Even big influ Instagram influencers haven't done anything like that. But at the end of the day, there's people that do more than me, and, and I'll never catch up to them. And I don't care. Stick your head in the sand if you want to be happy. Trust me. A lot of people in the entrepreneurial world is very, are very uh, competitive. They want to compete with me. They want to compete with others. I'm just like, knock yourself out, baby. This isn't like the UFC. It's like, I don't get paid to be better than somebody else. If you're in the UFC, if you're, you know, Chris Paul is a good friend of mine, plays in the NBA, and uh, Anthony Davis, I've gotten to know these guys, Ant Davis from the Lakers, and they get paid to be better than somebody that keep points. So for them, if I was them, and believe it or not, these guys are all very competitive. But for me, there's no points. Like, who has a better life than me? You know? Who has a better life? Well, it's, I don't know how to add it up. Because I, I weigh each of these four things very differently than other people. You know? So some people weight wealth as the ultimate one, but I wouldn't want to be Jeff Bezos. I mean, he grinded away till he's like almost 60 years old and now he's enjoying life. Now to him though, his counter argument to me would be maybe he wanted to grind away. Sounds great, but I wouldn't, and I would consider that a failure. You know, to me, you don't want to be wealthy at 60. I mean, you do want to be wealthy at 60, but you don't want to, hit it at 60. You don't want to finally start enjoying life at 60, do you? So, that's what I said. Stick your head in the ground. Stick your head in the sand, just like an ostrich does. And, and you'll be good. And then you realize this competition is against yourself. It's like, for example, I'm just going to use this recent deal that I worked on. It's a very hard deal and there's a lot of stress to put together a big deal like this you know we're acquiring a company with 650 stores 10,000 employees um of course we're we're actually just it was an asset purchase so we i didn't purchase all that stuff that i didn't want but it's still complicated i spent more hours reading legal documents like i know a lot about law i don't have a college degree Trust me, I've been in there and spent more money on lawyers that I know a lot more than a lot of lawyers know because I've spent money on other lawyers and learned things that they don't know. But I wouldn't say that I necessarily, um, I don't consider it an achievement. Like a lot of people are like, oh, are you happy? Like people ask me that a lot. Like, what are you happy about of your, with yourself? And I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I put my head in the sand. I don't even think that way about myself. You just wake up every day and you go to bed and you decide if you're happy at the end of the day. And you take it day by day like that. And um, you do need to execute on all four of these. But at the end of the day, that is my test. I literally call it the day by day test. Every single day. I wake up, a better way, by the way, than going to sleep is when you wake up. Do you wake up feeling like you have energy? See, Warren Buffett is the guy I like the most in, in business, for sure. Warren Buffett, he pulled it all off to me. Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to be him because he likes his life very, very like boring. Like He likes to live in the same house since 1957. I don't want to live in this. I don't like to live in the same house more than a couple of years. But... But I still respect him because he says, I'm 90 years old, or now he's, sorry, 88 or something. And he says, I tap dance out of bed every day. That guy won. If you tap dance out of bed, you win. Um, and
and that's what I was saying. In order to tap dance at a bit, you have to be working on all three, all four of these things. This love one's a tough one, you know, because then you're interacting with other people. The reason I like business is, although business is you, you're interacting with a lot of people too. Business, you've got sharks in business. You have people trying to take your money. You have so much BS here. That's why, in many ways, the simplest one to work on, if you look on Instagram, what are the most Instagram influencers? What industry are they in? Fitness. Because fitness is truly pretty much you against yourself. Like, pretty much, you're either eating right and working out, your body will respond. Doesn't matter. You don't have to really interact. You could lock yourself in a gym for a year and come out in good shape. These two are hard in many ways because that rule does not apply. To, there's nobody that can lock themselves in a room and create wealth. It's not possible. The very nature of wealth is an exchange of goods between people. So in a capitalistic system or even before capitalism, even in communism, socialism, even more so. And so these, these two outer ones are you against yourself. Happiness, especially when it comes to things like anxiety, depression, those are internal ones. Um, and they're hard to control. So I'm not sure which two are a, more of a challenge. I've always gone after this one because so few people understand wealth that you're not even, you ain't even competing with anybody. You'll see. For those of you, once you start learning how to make money, there is no competition. I'm working on these deals that are five, six, seven hundred million dollar deals. There ain't nobody up there with me. Nobody's competing. It's me and one or two other people. Literally, me and one or two other people bidding on these big deals. There's not, it's not, it's not busy up here. Um, it might appear that way, but it ain't busy up there. So I always like this one. Um, I like this one just because it's it's a common. It's got things that these three don't have. It's it's more of a challenge, but yes, it's less of a challenge at the same time. So all of you, that money is a real problem, um, and I've had that too. Like even when you make money now, I have to put out a lot of money to do big deals. Like just the lawyer fees on a deal like this is probably $500,000. Just the lawyer fees, even if the deal hadn't gone through. So what I'm saying is like, I could still feel cash flow crunches because I have money tied up here, here, and the other one, you know. <laughs> Someone said, Ty started by renting a Lambo and saying it's his. For the record, as I proved even with H Street, H Street, never rented a Lamborghini Except like last year when I was in Miami, I rented one for a day or two. That black Lambo uh, was never rented. But I do lease stuff. I lease lots of stuff. I lease real estate. I lease cars. I buy stuff too. Um, you should lease. Very, in the modern world, it's becoming a lease. It's funny. Everybody laughed when I lease stuff. And now the whole world's built around leasing. Uber, instead of owning a car, you basically turn car, your transportation into service. It's a SaaS application, software as a service, labor as a service, leasing as a service. So I've always been ahead of the game. That's one thing I learned from my mom. If I have one advantage over other people, my mom and dad were very unconventional. My dad became a bodybuilder. My dad was one of the first bodybuilders in America, in the United States. He was lifting weights. My dad was born a long time ago. My dad had me when he was very old, but he was born in 1934. He was lifting weights in 1948. And he was Mr. Junior USA in like 1949. So, and my mom was also unconventional. She was like a hippie. She was into organic food, like before that was even a word. And so I've learned to be unconventional, but I will tell you when you're unconventional, you get lots of dipshit people that don't understand you. Like if I say I lease a car, people are like, ha ha, that's renting. That's not renting. When you lease anything in the US tax system, when you buy something, you have to depreciate it or capitalize it. So you get a very spread out tax advantage. When you lease something, it's 100% deductible in most cases. So in taxes, most people have never had that much money, so taxes is not an issue. But when you start having to pay seven figures in taxes, you were looking for every deduction you can have. So even now, like some of the cars I own, I mean, looking back, I, I would have been, never bought a car. Lease 
cars depreciate. You think somebody's rich because they buy a car? You're stupid. So, <laughs> Ty looking mad girthy these days, no homo. <laughs> you got a way with words, my fifth. Mad girthy. I need to say that. Okay, somebody said drop shipping is dead. It's not dead. Well, I'll put it this way. Ecom isn't dead. Various, I'll tell you, drop shipping. You should have caught that window when it was there. I was teaching drop shipping in 2016, and people were like, this is a scam. And it worked. And then, slowly but surely, too many people got in it. And now it's almost 2020. And people were like, oh, it's not working as well. I told you, you have to catch trends, baby. Catch trends. Trends, trends, trends. Um, and I don't think drop shipping's dead. It's just more competitive. You know what I'm saying? So, what investments are good these days? I mean, man, best business, the best thing is to buy brands. That's what I'm doing. Buying up companies. I don't buy anything. I want to buy Victoria's Secret. I want to buy, but I want to buy them cheap. And I'm going to tell you the simplest business advice. All right, I'm going to save you guys. You want an MBA? An MBA at Harvard is 60000 a year. Okay? I'm going to save you 60000 right here. Buy good things for a low price. <laughs> then you're going to be rich. If you can pull off that one thing. Now, don't buy it because it's not buy low. That's a, people say buy low. That is not the secret to wealth because sometimes what you're buying low is just a piece of crap. But buy good things low and you'll be able to sell them high. Now, people go, oh, that's, you're oversimplifying. No, I'm not. I'm giving you an example. I just bought a $740 million revenue company. It made 740, it made 69 million last month. Deposited in the bank. And I'm buying these businesses pennies on the dollar. That is how, now that's the skill. And you can do that in real estate. Bo is here. We're working on some Amazon training. You can do that with Amazon. You can buy, you're selling Hasbro toys. You're selling video games. That's what he's selling. But the key is you got to buy them cheap. So being a deal maker, now that is a skill that's been working since Rockefeller in the 1800s when he amassed a $600 billion net worth. I'm not saying he's a perfect guy because wealth is built by blood, sweat, and tears. Empires are built, and he built an empire. So people got burned, but people got burned in communism too. Humans been burning humans before there was even money. So... The point being is he was a deal maker. So that, there's your MBA. Right now, there's a transition happening. We're talking about wealth. You have, you know, a trillion dollars in assets just in retail. So just look at Toys R Us. Okay, Toys R Us was a brand, I think it was over 100 years old. I forget. It's, it's a multi, multi, multi-decade year old brand. Almost everybody grew up, grew up knowing about Toys R Us. Okay? That thing, bankrupt, is done. Um, Barney's was a department store. If you've ever been to New York, it's like one of the fanciest. Bankrupt. Sears. Bankrupt. American Apparel. Remember when American Apparel was like the biggest clothing brand? Boom. I mean, every there was LA, every billboard was American Apparel. Boom. Bankrupt. People bought it pennies on the dollar. Real estate. There's a way to buy real estate pennies on the dollar. Um, you can buy it either at the courtroom stairs where there's auctions. You can buy people's notes. You can buy notes from banks sometimes. Pennies on the dollar. And a recession will probably be here re relatively soon. Um, it's been about a decade. And recessions come every decade or so. Um, but that's your opportunity. Don't worry about that. Just be sharp. Understand the game. You know, Charlotte Roos, yes. Um, I saw that uh, JCPenney will probably be bankrupt here very shortly. Um, most airlines have been bankrupt. How many times have airlines been bankrupt? Now they are able to pull themselves. Forever 21. I mean, you know how big that brand is? They have it, when I go to London, I live in London part time, they got Forever 21. Forever 21 in Los Angeles. That thing's done. Did you know, listen to this, Bo. Guess how many people they owe money to? Creditors. 
No <laughs> JC Penny either. No, Forever, Forever 21. 21. Just guess, Adrian. Guess. Anybody guess? Because you may think you have bills and a lot of people calling you up and credit cards and Visa calling you and say, where's our money? How many creditors are calling Forever 21? I'll say 15. Probably 15. I'd say at least one for every store they have. Okay, so that 2,000, 3,000 yeah, stores, yeah. 3,000 creditors. Someone said 21. <laughs> yeah. Forever 21. Uh, the answer is 100,000 creditors. Oh. 100,000 people. They owe FedEx millions of dollars here. Oh, but all the way yeah. down to like little mom and pops that they bought clothing from. How would you like to have 100,000? Do you know why? They didn't embrace e -com. How stupid do you have to be? I mean, they're such a smart, the owners of Forever 21 were so smart that they built this brand that's massively valuable, multi-billion dollars in sales. But they were just like, no, I don't think e going to work. I'm just going, ah. That's the thing about the human condition. We can be very smart and very stupid simultaneously in the same human body. You know, it's, it's like, wow. I see that in myself sometimes. Sometimes I'm so smart. And then the next day, I'm just like so stupid. I'm going, how can I simultaneously be genius and moron? Like it's, it, but that is part of the human psyche. Our brains are almost bipolar in a certain sense, you know? Airbnb real estate is a good investment. If you can negotiate the contracts for a low price, like I know how to negotiate. You don't want to go up against me in negotiation. All right. and, and I don't always, I don't always try to be ruthless because you don't always want to be ruthless because then it'll backfire. But I know how to negotiate. And with that one skill, if I could go through this phone right into this live call into you, if I could show you how to be a deal maker, you'd be set for life. I'm not saying you'd be on the Forbes list or you'd be a billionaire or a millionaire even, but you'd be set financially. If you know how to make deals, you can always be good. Always be good. So, um, Ty, can I get SMMA clients abroad? Sure. My SMMA idea from 2016 is still kick ass. It's just kick it ass. The e-com, I got still people. I mean, the e-com program that I have, some of you are in. Like my own staff goes through it to run my big brands. And like I said, dress for the big brand. People think they're an e-com. I'm like, no, you ain't an e-com. We're an e-com. I'm not trying to belittle other people, but we're moving, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 pieces of clothing a day. Just e-com. So my e-com program, some of you should be in it. Credit mentor. Right now, I'm working on big credit lines because we have to buy 10, 20, 30 million dollars worth of clothing at a time. And you don't want to do that all cash. You want to do that credit. You have to understand credit. And then lastly, real estate. I'm working on buying a hotel right now. It's actually a bed and breakfast slash inn. It's zoned in the inn in Miami. It's funny. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a difference between hotels and inn. So I'm buying that right now. You have to. Um, you got to know, know how to negotiate. You got to know how to write up a real estate contract. You have to know how to um, really get into the nitty gritty of stuff. And so I'm working in those four areas all day. So I'm going to put up a link, by the way. I don't know. I got to go here in a second. Um, I'm going to. So here's what I'm going to do. I've decided last year I opened up Black Friday where you could get my top four programs at a heavily discounted price for Black Friday. So many people took advantage of that, but it was only open for a few days. Like people were like crying afterwards. So I'm gonna open it up early here. Um, what is the link? Do you know? <clears throat> I'll put it right here. Tylopez.com slash mentor four. If you wanna get in this Black Friday thing, go to tylopez.com slash mentor four. You're gonna save over $2,000. Okay. Um, so how can I get all of your courses? This is your best bet. Go right here. It's gonna we're gonna shut it down. This is just for the month of November. Um, and I've got some bonuses for the people who get in first. So <laughs> Ty put on some pounds. He's eating well. I'm actually bulking right now. I've been doing a bulk cut thing. 
So I cut down to like 160. I cut down to like 165, and now I'm like 185. I'll probably go up to like 200 pounds, then I'll cut back. January 1. It's a whole other thing in the health side of things. So, it, by the way, you go into this, not to change subject, but um, a lot of this stuff I'm introducing. This year's Black Friday is better than last year's because some of the bonuses I have, they always get better because I share with you what I've learned in the last 12 months. And I've gone through all a crazy amount of stuff in the last 12 months, just like business stuff and learning and just doing bigger and bigger stuff. So, um, someone said this guy's making money off telling people how to make money. Hmm. Not really true. This is a very small part. You probably missed the whole beginning, but I own major American brands. That's where I make my money. So, this live call is not a Ameri major American brand. Ty, did you live, learn from Jim Rohn? I wish he died. So I'm gonna put a link here. You should see it also on social media. I'll be reading, I'm gonna read off the names of people who get in here. Get my phone's charged. All right, questions, and then I got to go. What's your opinion on Dave Ramsey, the radio guy? Uh, I don't listen to him as much. I mean, a lot of his advice is good. It's for kind of mainstream lifestyle. So if you live a mainstream lifestyle, I don't live a mainstream lifestyle. None of that stuff applies. Like, it doesn't work for me. He's like, never use credit cards or something like that. I don't know what he says, but I'm gonna, like, never use debt. Well, that's if you have a nine to five job, you probably don't want to build up a lot of debt, right? Um, but if you don't have a nine to five job, then it doesn't matter. You can pay off the debt. Is there a possibility of like leverage buyouts? You buy companies using debt, especially if you don't have to personally guarantee them. What's your thoughts on Justin Porter? Who's Justin Porter? Do you know? No idea. You know? I do not have a thought. Do not know who it is. Best book you've read recently? Man, I'll tell you a good book is Titan. The story of John D. Rockefeller is wild. Or the house that, is it the house that Morgan built? About J.P. Morgan? Uh, what else? I always has the fattest phone cases. That's because I don't, man, my phone is where I make my money. I do all, I don't even go into an office ever, so I can't have, I see all these people don't have phone covers and they're always cracking and breaking. Thoughts on Gary V? I, 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 we're acquaintances, I don't know him real well. We're going on this world tour together. I, I spoke on stage, me and him spoke last month in LA. I just said hello, like I said, we're not super close. I know Grant Cardone a little bit better, but we're acquaintances, so most people in this game of business are lone wolves, man. They ain't buddies with everybody. It's kind of like athletes. It's like, you know them, but you don't all hang out unless you're on the same team. What's your opinion on Berkshire Halfway? Warm ups, best <clears throat> business man ever. For sure. So, that's his company. Why you gay, bro? Um... I didn't know I was gay, but I don't think I'm gay. You ever seen that <laughs> the one in the office where Andy can't Andy doesn't know if he's gay? No. You haven't seen that one? <laughs> Jim has to come talk to him and he's like <laughs> he's like, Are you attracted to men? And Andy's like, No. But if Brad Pitt, it's like if I'm on a desert island or something, he goes through this whole thing. And, uh, you haven't seen that one? No. Oscar's trying to talk to about I'm gay. So I'll be like, yeah, I'm like, I don't think I'm gay. Um, David Buss' best advice, parkour, somebody wrote. David Buss' best advice. Um, to me, that's a good question. Someone said no one is asking the questions he's answering. Hey. They don't know you're on different. No, no, I'm on another. I got three lives going over here. He thinks I'm just making this one up. Yeah, I'm making that one up. I got YouTube. Do we have Twitter on? No. No, YouTube, Facebook, YouTube, and IG. YouTube, Facebook, and IG. <laughs> hey, there's an example of what Dr. Buss taught me. So humans all have this weird combination 
of narcissism and the narcissism man manifests itself in something called certainty bias. So humans are very convinced of their own opinion. If you don't believe me, just watch politics. Everyone's sure Bernie Sanders is sure he can save America. Donald Trump is sure. Elizabeth Warren is sure. Yeah. Um, Wang, Andrew Wang. Um, everybody's sure, but you know the real honest thing is probably none of them know what they're doing. I guarantee you. It's just like, it's trends that happen. So like, if during your presidency things go well, it's probably from things from 10 years ago outside of your control. So at the end of the day, what Dr. Buss taught me is that you have to learn to ignore and read um, people well because people are very deceptive without knowing they're deceptive. And so, yeah. <laughs> What's your opinion on No Nut November? <laughs> Hey, I'll tell you this, uh, periods of self-control are good in all ways, whether it's fasting for certain periods of time so you control discipline for sure. Um, I like Jocko, what's his name? Jocko Willink. Willink. He, I've interviewed him before. He's an Instagram in, or a social media influencer that I think is cool. He's a Navy SEAL dude. He said discipline equals freedom. I think, to, I think there's some truth to that. I think you can take it too far and you can be too disciplined and you never enjoy life, but... Um, so no nut Thursday or no nut November. sorry not no nut Thursday no nut November hey you know, it's like one of those ones that's like whatever tired you're a boomer no I ain't the boomer is my mom I'm a boomer what are your motivation for landing your plane on the wall are you talking about me one of my sixty seventh that plane plane I have one I'm not sure which one that one is. Yeah, people that okay boomer, you see this. Yeah, that's like a trick. big meme. But now. here, there's a thing Dr. Buzz also told me. People are imitative. They're sheep. Once somebody says okay, hey boomer, and people think it's cool, then everybody's like, hey boomer. It's like when when uh, Conor McGregor goes, who the fuck is that guy or whatever. Yeah. And now you see people saying it. It's like, which is fine. There's nothing wrong. But I don't like to imitate stuff. At the end of the day. You, you succeed by being a free thinker, man. So I don't like to recite. There are some things I guess I recite. That, and all of us are caught up in culture. Like human language is culture. The way we dress is culture. So I can't say that I'm outside of culture, but I try to be outside of culture as much as I can. Uh, why are the oldest companies Japanese? They're not. Oldest companies, there's restaurants in France that are 1500s. Oldest businesses technically in the world are military. There's military, you know, the Greek army's been around for thousands of years, but you may not call that a business, but I call biz military's business, especially nowadays, trust me. There's money, anytime money be made, it's a business. So, uh, yeah, or money be exchanged. Even nonprofits are business. Trends in mel mental health. Hmm. What are the trends in mental health? I think people are becoming more anxious and anxiety is at an all-time high. And I think a lot of it is because people live in cities and that's why I try to spend a lot of time uh, in the countryside, honestly. Which one you talking to the most? What was that referring to? Only God can save America? Okay, I'll let you say that. Can we grab a beer or kombucha? Maybe one day. Mind space. Frank Potts joined. You can always hear people talking about melatonin. I like how just the stream of consciousness on social media is amazing. <laughs> one person talking about God, and this person just wrote. You always hear people talking about melatonin. <laughs> what are you, where do you always hear people talking about melatonin? <laughs> on the where streets. Where do you hang out? I want to know. Like, were you like in an Uber today? And like the Uber guy was was just like, yo, what do you think of melatonin? <laughs> and were you at a club and some girl was like, yo, what's your melatonin consumption level? What is your number one advice for success? Uh, so overall success, not financial success. Focus on juggling the four pillars of a good life simultaneously. Um, my best advice for financial success is learn how to read people and cut deals. Deal makers, deal makers. Everybody's a deal maker. 
that makes above average income? Uh, is starting from a third world country considered starting from less than zero? No, zero would be death. So, but starting from a third world country certainly makes it harder. I'm, I'm not going to lie, you know. Everything makes it harder. I grew up without a dad. That, that makes it harder. I, mean, I didn't grow up rich. That makes it harder. It's easier to make money when your parents have money. Bill Gates' dad was very wealthy. Um, a lot of wealthy people, parents were wealthy, you know. Like, so, a lot of things can make it harder. I want to drop out of college to do real estate full time. College isn't for me. Any advice to be a top real estate professional? Patrick Panty. Here's the thing Arnold Schwarzenegger became a millionaire by 30 in real estate. He, he made friends with some real estate investors and he just followed them around every day or three times a week. So, the best way to learn real estate is to be, be an assistant, get donuts, bring coffee, some low level thing where you can talk a real real estate investor into letting you spend two to three days a week out. And about with them as they do deals. That's how you learn, man. Bro, making 150k by money his own. That is interesting grammar. John W. Baco, maybe he needs melatonin. It's just the, uh, <laughs> the belief. Um, networking is the best way we join the crowd. The only problem with networking is. In general, people you want to network aren't going to let you network with them. You know? So, yes, if you could network with the right people, it would be awesome. But the right people don't usually want to network with you. It's kind of like dating. Every single human has been attracted and wanted to date somebody who didn't want to date them back. So, um, yeah. Environment and trying to win over people's sport. Any advice on parenting? <laughs> What are your thoughts on fast fashion? It's killing, especially for younger. I mean, Fashion Nova's crushing. Fashion Nova's crushing. Boohoo, Pretty Little Thing. Those are all fast fashion brands. Um, the brand that I have, the Dress Barn, is not is an older woman brand, so they're not as concerned about what Kim Kardashian wore yesterday. So it doesn't need to be fast fashion as much. So again, you got to read situations. Life is fluid, and, and you have to learn. Think of it this way. Um, let's say you play a sport, whatever sport. You, making money is like a sport. So whether you play basketball, soccer, football, whatever it is, baseball, hockey, rugby, it's all about reading the situation. So in the U.S., Tom Brady, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, football player of all time, especially quarterback, if you just go by statistics and wins and Super Bowl championships, he reads the situation and every play is a little bit different. So if you would go to Tom Brady and you would say, what's the secret to winning Super Bowls? Do you always throw the ball? Do you always throw it, you know, this way, that way? Is it better to always run the ball? Is it better, like his answer would be, I gotta read the other side. And so when it comes to make it, this is what I was saying, Dr. Buss taught me, is that humans want like a one stop fits all type set of advice. Like, yo, here's how you make money. You make an e-commerce site, you post 10 products, you buy $100 in Facebook ads, and your bank account fills up. Well, that's, that may have, that worked at one point. The first people that did that made money. I, I was doing Facebook ads in 2008. Kid you not, I was one of the first people ever to do Facebook ads, by the way. That's why I said I'm unconventional. People still learning Facebook ads now in 2019. And it's better late than never, but I'm going, bro, 2008, 2009, I was in the beta program. I remember I was living in Hollywood and Vine, Adrian, right there above Katsuya Restaurant. Yeah. And I remember <clears throat> I was in a networking group and someone was like, yo, Facebook, Facebook's, remember, Facebook wasn't even the dominant thing there. You had MySpace still around. I was doing MySpace ads, believe it or not, which did not convert as well. So I did Facebook ads. I went on a date with this girl at the sushi, came back, and I made like $17,000 profit. No targeting, one creative, didn't know what I was doing, just uploaded something, 
back then the competition was zero. So I knew, so I got lucky in a certain sense, but I, in another sense, I wasn't lucky. I had learned, read the situation, 2008, 2009. What's the way to make money? Zzz, Facebook ads, nobody's doing it. Let me test it. And I spent like one grand and made like 17 grand. People are like, oh my, my ROAs are like three X. I'm going shit, they used to be 10. <laughs> they used to be 10 X. You spend 1700 bucks, you make 17,000. Even YouTube ads. I started doing YouTube ads in 2015. And people gave me shit. They're like, oh, this, is, this guy's dumb. I'm like, dumb? I was spending 60 Gs a day making 140 back the same day. You ain't dumb if you spend 60 and make 140. I was making 60, 70, 80 grand profit a day. But you can't do that anymore on YouTube. So people are like, Ty, what makes me, well, what am I doing today? is different than what I did in 20, 2008, and it's different than what I did in 2015. That's why I've been telling people for many, many years, the real way to make it in life is to become a learning machine, you know? Learning machine. Someone says, Todd, you have a response to Gary Vee who doesn't believe in buying online courses. I don't know that Gary Vee really believes that, whatever. Gary Vee sells books. And he sells course. Uh, he sells conference tickets. I don't think Gary believes that. People say that. Gary's not dumb. Gary no. Gary's good at social media. Um, do I use carry forward interest? You're talking about tax stuff. You use carry forwards, charitable contributions, things like that. Yes. yes. Are you willing to visit and speak worldwide? Yes, I am right now. I'm going to India, I'm not India, I'm going to the UK tomorrow and Dubai on Friday. Oh, I can't hear you. How come you can't hear me? Everybody else can hear me. All right, I'm gonna go in a second. I'm neglecting my YouTube comments. Thoughts on speed reading? Somebody posted eight times in a row. Yeah, I sped read your thing about speed reading. So, see how I did that? It's pretty good. Um, what are my thoughts on speed reading? I speed read sometimes. Speed read when the book is crappy. That is my best answer to you. Which is a lot of the time. Okay, I'm gonna go and say, when would you marry? I don't know if I'm the marrying type, but some people should. Dr. Buzz told me about 50% of people like being married. The other 50% don't, which is why divorce rates are about 50%. So again, be ahead of the curve, figure out what type person you are, you know? Ty 300 group sounds interesting, but rent is due in 15 days. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. For this, for those of you that come here, it's tremendous price saving that you're not gonna get any other time, but except Black Friday, and the month of November <clears throat> now. I'm kicking this off today. When the student is ready, the money will appear. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear, but also the money. I've learned this, even on big deals that I've done, um, that are complicated deals. If you're meant to do the deal, the money comes in, and it surprises you. So that's why I say, there's more money lost by hesitation than there is by action, you know? SMMA in France, yes. Ty Lopez created Zeus. No, my business partner created Zeus. He sold it two months ago for $300 million. But I did not start Zeus. I didn't know him back then. That Mentor 4 link isn't working. Is that link working? Just click it. Mm -hmm. Let me try it. Comes right up. Yeah, it works. That's your internet, buddy. Or you don't know how to spell mentor. That's a possibility. Alex Jones can sell supplements. Why not Ty Lopez? <laughs> Ty, you changed my life. Not kidding. Well, I'm glad to hear. I'm Genie paying 300 million for Zeus. No, 
a German company bought it. It's actually a U.S. company. It's a New York stock. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. It's a big company. People sometimes think, as I told you, often think that I just do social media influence. But I'll tell you this. I do a lot less of this now. And <clears throat> some people give me shit for doing it, but people miss out. There ain't a lot of people teaching good stuff. I'm going to tell you that right now. So for those of you who, you know, listened and believed in what I was saying from 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, I hope it helped you. I don't have much time to do it anymore. So, um, and I'm not saying that in a threatening way. I'm just saying this is the way life is now. And I always told people, if I could go back in time and find people who I could pay a thousand bucks or whatever to teach me stuff, that would save me 10 years. I would have always done that. In fact, I've always done that. But it's, it's a very, I told you I'm ahead of the curve. Most people aren't ahead of the curve. Most people, the thought of paying for something that their, their grandparents didn't pay for or their parents didn't pay for, like, oh, that's a scam. My parents paid for college, so college, I mean, trust me, your grandkids will laugh at you for the things that you call the scam versus the things that you pleasantly accepted. Guaranteed. There's so many scams going on in this world that are so close, like McDonald's is a scam for sure, in the sense that it definitely preys on poor, poor people, and it's definitely unhealthy for you, and it's one of the American institutions, and Coca-Cola, as much as I love Warren Buffett, Coca-Cola definitely is a big, soda is definitely a big part of why 30% of American kids are pre vitamin are diabetic or pre-diabetic, they predict in the next 10 years. These are scams of epic proportions. The rule of scamming is do it so obvious that nobody will believe it's a scam. You know, there's a lot of scams. I said college, I've been telling people, not all college is a scam, but a lot of it is. If you go to Harvard, it's not a scam. It's such a prestigious school. There's a networking effect happens there. There's doors that open, but there are people, I kid you not, there's a, I always see this billboard in LA, Azusa Pacific College. I don't mean to pick on them, they must want to kill me because I picked on them, but they're charging 45000 a year to get an undergrad degree. I mean, they have degrees like divinity. Okay, just trust me, if you're Christian or Muslim or whatever, believe in Jesus, Muhammad, do you think Jesus wanted to pay you, you wanted you to pay $45,000 to learn about God? A year for four years that actually sounds like goes against every religion ever every smart person so how's that not a scam divinity degree for four you're gonna go and get 180,000 and therefore you know more about God because you sat in the classroom and you listen to it I mean it's just this is what I'm talking about so two minutes remaining yeah don't worry about whether what's a scam you already been scammed I've already been scammed. So your main thing is to unravel the scam and take things on your own, you know? So I'm going to put this here. I got to go because Instagram is going to cut off. Anyway, I'm on my farm. I try to go to bed early. Right here. This here is the best thing I put out. It's 2019, almost 2020. This is discounted $2,000 off. So you snooze, you lose on this. And I'm not just telling you to do this because I'm trying to push money. I'm just, I haven't even been pushing my products at all. I've been working on big ass deals, billion dollar type deals. Ty, how did you meet Floyd Mayweather? Oh, I just invited him to the Laker game the other day. Some people saw that. He's a very interesting guy. People don't realize, I think he had a million dollars in his backpack while we were sitting there. <laughs> he keeps, I think, a million dollars cash. But he's rich, man. He's smart with his money. He told me some stuff. I'm not going to share his private stuff, but he's smart. He owns a lot of assets. And uh, so, yeah, interesting guy. You don't like Pacquiao? I don't know Pacquiao. I know Floyd Mayweather, so I can't tell you about people I don't know. But anyway, huge fan. Thank you for all of you. I hope you learned something in this hour. I hope it was worth my time. Because I'd rather be on my farm. I told you, stick your head in the sand. Don't worry about other people. Always going to be some person talking about you. And uh, I will tell you this. At the end of the day, you laugh last. 
when you win. So just win, stick your head in the ground till you win. And no one ever fully wins in life, but win and people shut up. That's, this is a great thing for you. And uh, you'll prove a lot of people wrong. So, boom, good night. <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> Without me with glasses, is killing me. I'm ending the live. Sick.